it's good to see you. You too. So we are hearing a little bit out there about people are talking that could there be some sort of treatment uh, or even vaccine. Right. So let's let's address the treatment issue right now. I think that's really an important one. I know in the last two days there's been a lot of press about hydroxychloroquine. Just to kind of give people an idea of what that drug is, it's a drug that's used to treat people with uh, um, certain types of rheumatologic illnesses such as rheumatoid arthritis. It works by partially suppressing the immune system in that state. Um, there's been some evidence that with hydroxychloroquine um, it can inhibit the virus from multiplying, but this is the but part that is really important. Um, the, the only study of using this medicine in patients who have COVID-19 came from 30 patients who were mildly ill. They, they, uh, six of them uh, were, didn't even have any symptoms. Um, none of them would have required hospitalization, although they did the study with them in the hospital. None of them would have required hospitalization. And what they showed was they just didn't shed virus as long as they otherwise would have. There is absolutely no evidence that this medicine at this point is going to be useful to treat severe disease. Having said that, those are the people who I think it's worth um, make, giving it a shot. If you're at home and you're gonna get better otherwise, it's best not to take this medicine because this medicine is not without risk itself. Um, it can do something uh, that, that can sometimes combine with other medicines cause heart dysrhythmias, that can be life-threatening dysrhythmias. So it's really a drug that has some real downsides that you would really have to be very familiar with what other medicines someone's taking and be careful with it. Um, the other thing is it can cause eye damage. So it's not a totally benign drug. And we have no evidence that it actually helps someone who is really sick with COVID-19, but that's what we're gonna try to find out. What we do know, again, remember, over 80% of people who have this virus are going to recover by just staying at home. So in my mind, it doesn't make any sense to give this drug to someone who's gonna get over this virus, whether we give it or not, and take any of the risks that come with it. Okay? Great. Perfect. All right. Uh, do you wanna go next, Water, and then could we? It, however you wanna do it, if and you guys wanna just, if you can on. edit however you want. So I think a lot of people are wondering, how, how are you, how is the staff doing here at the hospital with all this? You, you have the one confirmed case here that you're treating, and so far, that's it, but, uh, so I think Wouter can speak to that a little better okay. than I, I can, but um, um, that patient is still stable. Um, and again, I haven't been directly involved in this care. One thing before I leave the drug situation I want to bring up because it's come up in the last two days is something called NSAIDs in COVID-19. And there's been a lot of discussion about not taking medicine like ibuprofen and instead taking Tylenol. And what I can tell you about that is that um, First of all, those are drugs that are commonly prescribed for fever. Um, and I think if someone's uncomfortable with, it, with a fever, then it makes sense to take Tylenol first, just because we, over, even COVID-19 aside, ibuprofen can sometimes cause uh, problems with uh, inflammation in the stomach. It can sometimes bother your kidneys. So forget COVID-19 a minute. If you can control your fever with Tylenol, that's probably better anyway. But as far as, um, Drugs like ibuprofen making COVID-19 worse, there is no evidence to that effect. Uh, yesterday, both the FDA, the World Health Organization, and the CDC all came out and said exactly that. There is no evidence that taking these drugs makes your infection with COVID-19 worse. So I just wanna make sure that people understand that. If they're really uncomfortable, it's probably not gonna hurt them if they have to take a dose of ibuprofen. Social media is a great thing, but is this Yes, exactly. What's spreading on social media exactly. is that uh, don't take ibuprofen. Yes. Um, there are some drugs that are going to be in clinical trials, uh, just so that people know that they exist. Uh, we're far from knowing anything about how they're going to pan out. There's a drug called remdesivir um, that is going to be in clinical trials. It's here in the United States under clinical trials. It also inhibits the virus from multiplying. Um, again, it's, um, it's a drug that uh, we'll know more after the clinical trial is over. It's not a drug that you can just get right now. Um, it's a drug that has uh, to be going through this trial. So it's not a drug even available for the average hospital. Um, there's some other drugs that are gonna be tried, but by and large, I would just wanna stress at this point, there is no proven treatment for this virus. The people that need to have these drugs tried on them are the people that are really sick, not the people that are gonna get better at home. Okay. No vaccine and no, no really uh, antiviral treatment. Exactly right.
So your best bet is just to stay home and ride it out if you do have it, um, like we've talked about before. I know one of the questions, and I, I, get, I can ask Water about this, one of the questions today has to do with the medical equipment that you need, the PPE. Uh, do you have the gloves and gowns and masks that you need for all your workers here at the hospital? Again, I think Water can be, uh, I, I can tell you that yes, right now we have adequate supplies of those things. I can also tell you that the World Health Organization has actually come out and said that if you have a patient with this, it's usually droplet, it's almost, it's not usually airborne, and they recommend that you don't need the special N95 mask to treat these patients, unless you're gonna be doing something like the patient needs to be put on a ventilator. That's a different situation that can cause what we call aerosols, and that's where a, a, a critical care doctor and a critical care nursing team would need to have those masks on. We're gonna probably be transitioning in our hospital soon to just using plain, uh, surgical masks because that's what you really need to protect yourself against this virus combined with other uh, personal protective equipment. So I think in the future you're going to see us here at CDPH using surgical masks, goggles of, um, or face shield, um, gowns, and gloves because that's what really you need to, to be protected against this virus under the vast majority of circumstances. And that way we'll, we'll save the things like the N95s where they really need them in places like the ER and our uh, critical care unit where they could be doing those invasive procedures. And you have enough of that medical equipment for your workers right now? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Okay. All right. Anything Good. else? Not from my side. Good. Thank you. We appreciate sure. it as always. We know you're Thank busy. you. Appreciate that. Yeah.